Hey everyone, this is Derek Bros with the Conscious Resistance Network. Today is September 12, 2015, and I am here, here at the West Park Presbyterian Church for the Declassify 9-11 Symposium, and I'm talking with a 9-11 victim's family member, Mr. Bob McElvain. How are you doing? Pleasure. So, Sorry. 14th anniversary, you've been involved with this movement for some amount of years now, trying to get justice for your son. What feels different to you this year compared to past years? To be honest, nothing. Um, I, it, I've been doing this so long, and I really don't have any faith in this country, and I don't have faith that this will ever come to fruition because they just can't afford to, you know, the world politics won't allow it because it'll just, you know, we are an empire, and an empire is not going to allow this to bring them down. Uh, personally, as far as the, like the Saudi Arabian, the, uh, this release in the 28 pages, as I said in my speech, I, if Hannity, or not Hannity, O'Reilly, if they're talking about it, and you're seeing it all the time, something's up. I mean, I think that they should come out, but the thing is, they're willing to throw the Saudis under the bus. They'll, they'll talk about the guys that died, you know, one, some of the princes that died afterwards, and, uh, you know, they're trying to just sweep this under, you know, they're, they're, the Saudis will be the designated patsies. You know, I mean, they, they, there's something playing in this, you know, like the... Uh, Steinberg was saying that uh, you know, 9-11 families will get closure. I'd say, I was really pissed off when I got up there. I said, I, yeah, I won't even have one little bit of closure if those pages... And I have no problem having the pages come out. I asked for it years and years ago. You know, as part of that movement. And a lot of family members do want it, but it's still not going to... It's, like, it's just telling a little, little, little part of the stories. Do you think that those pages, like you said, would be more about... Uh, redirecting the blame towards Saudi Arabia and in, in your research and your you know your opinion on this matter being so close to it do you feel like there's more than just Saudi Arabia uh, to blame well I blame the United States you know it's I, it, it really is important to look at history you know what controls the world it's money you know we, we don't talk about the Rockefellers the Rothschilds these people control the world Okay, so like blaming it on Bush or blaming it on Cheney, that's silly. Blaming it on Israel is silly. You know, everyone's a patsy in this. You know what I mean? It's a matter of controlling the resources of the world. It's the Middle East, it's the strategy of contention that went back to the early 80s. That's what they want. They don't want peace, they don't want democracy. Money makes, or war makes money. You go back to Smedley Butler. You know, war is a racket, and it's the same thing. So it. Even like the Saudi Arabia thing, the, the you know the, the 28 pages, you know, I, I, as I said in the speech, I went to Hamilton. Family members are there, you know, demanding it, and he said, "Well, because of national security, we won't allow it." But you know, here's a, a left gatekeeper, you know, October surprise, I ran contra. If you do, you know, I, you know, I did. I've been doing my own work. You know, this is what this guy does. He protects the United States, yeah. and he tells lies. Well, again, if this is on TV, it's like, oh, jeez, our free pass is allowed this information to come out. Well, you know they got something planned. There must be and, some reason they're talking about and, it. They, well, they'll make them pat. They don't give it. They'll th clearly throw, you know, they won't throw the country under, but they don't care about getting rid of their prince, prince this, prince that. You know, they've changed regimes anyway, so. You all right? Uh, no, you're fine. So I support the efforts of people doing that, but the thing is, I know people will contact me, and whatever I feel is the right thing to say, I will say it. You know, I'm not a part of any truth. I'm not part of this Saudi, Saudi Arabia thing, so I'm going to speak my piece. You know, I think the United States was involved, but if I say that, you know, again, oh, Bush and Cheney, oh, you know, they're they're all puppets of the yeah. world. You know, they don't get, you know, they're just, they have no say in anything. To think that any politician, any president has any say in anything, you're an idiot. No, I absolutely agree. So I, I wanted to get your thoughts I, um, on what has been the response from your interactions with other family members and your pursuit of truth. Is there, amongst the 9-11 family members, which is obviously a range of people with different ideas and opinions, um, but generally, is it sort of, you know, we just want to be left alone, or are there other family members with questions who don't speak publicly, or have you been attacked for your positions? What's your experience? It's it's indifference. You know, I you know, of course, when I was going to the hearings, you know, the Jersey girls they were so involved in it, and I was sort of in their coattails. You know, you know their activities, but yeah. it's just you know, if you have a family, you're just I mean, they were brutalized. They were absolutely brutalized as they got further into it because they're becoming too powerful. 
And if you have a family, you have to say, I can't do this. I got to take care of my family. You know, I'm at a point now, my, you know, my son, I have another son and he has little kids, but I mean, I, I can do what I want. And uh, it's just people, family members. Well, my wife got, or I got an argument with a family member down at Ground Zero this year, you know, two days ago. And, um, or was that, yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. And it, it was brutal, you know, and she, she went to my wife and said, how can your husband think this way? It, but it's just too, too painful. They just don't want to believe it. It's again thinking, saying your father's a rapist. You know, you just don't want to believe that your country could possibly do something like that. And the fact that I would even say it. Now, if you want to have a conversation about it, you know, we can sort of get away from the country and say, well, to me, it's a world event. You know what I mean? It's uh, it, it's about controlling money. It's not just the United States government. No, this is much no. bigger than that. It, it is much bigger than that. And it always has been that way. You know, you look at World War One. Well, it wasn't the United States getting involved in it, but the idea of the money of the world, you know, we have to control what's happening. The takeover of Russia. Well, that wasn't a, a people's revolution. That was yeah. a revolution of rich people. The bankers. Yes, and it's always that way. So it's, uh, but to explain that to people, and 9-11 family members, well, my wife saw the, uh, the first event she's going to this year, and she saw the, the movie yesterday, and, she, and it's the first time that she... That opened. It, well, she, she said, you know, it takes the emotion away, watching the scientific, we know that Bobby died of an explosion, but she said it takes the emotion away from 9-11. I looked at that, seeing the mist, seeing the buildings coming down, it's the first time she's really looking, she says, now, if you die, I will talk about it. That's that, that, the truth continues on? Yeah, so it's, um, well, so, so friends and 9-11 family members just they've ignored it and I think that's generally the the situation that we deal with in the public as well those of us who do the research as journalists and as activists we deal with that you know we try to talk to people on the street and you get the people like how dare you how could you possibly be here and then they they claim to and this has been the unfortunate side effect since the, for the last 14 years is that you guys the family members and um, the victims themselves are used for whatever political purpose that people you know choose to use at that moment whether that's yeah, remember 9-11 but don't question it mm -hmm. in your opinion what can people actually do to honor the the victims of 9-11 and the, fam the surviving family members well to take a stand and re research it but the thing is and I've you know well I'll just give an example a friend of mine <clears throat> it was a financial advisor but he just he called me once and apologized he says I'm, I'm sorry I didn't look into this. He says, I have suddenly done that. But you know what happened to him? He ended up getting divorced and he left his job because he's just so dumbfounded that this can happen. Uh, my friend's a, a, a superior court judge in uh, Michaelana County and his assistant, not assistant, but you know, his staff member looked into 9-11. He, he took his family and left, went to South America. It's, so it can ruin your life because, and if your wife doesn't support you you're in trouble yeah because it just brings a lot of heat on you it definitely causes you to reevaluate your, re your whole life it, it has to you know again it's your father is a criminal a horrible criminal massacre of people and they don't want to look at the government and say that happened it's just a, it's a brutal brutal thing so the best thing we can do you know you're hearing it from uh, from bob himself from one of the family members is to continue to research this topic continue to look into it to find out the truth and as you said you know the 28 pages it, it's at least given us something in the mainstream to kind of hang on and keep pushing the issue but will that lead to the full truth of 9-11 more than likely not yeah well in my point it's like this way i can stay away from family members because bobby died we took his body home that week we found him on thursday took him home friday and we buried him and he was mutilated but i can prove you know i'll tell family members this that he was one there was no events of what's about it. as my wife helen said the, the richard gage's movie that he showed yesterday again took that emotion out of me my god you see it, it any idiot would say these buildings were blown up building seven obviously that's a demolition you know, an idiot can see that. My dog can see that. My grandchildren can see that. You know, so it's yeah. To, it, it, so it, I will continue talking about that. My son was murdered. It's an inside job, just for the fact that he died. Be, I could say he died before the planes. That's a strong possibility. When people say, "How could that possibly happen?" I said, "Because it was a goddamn 
bombs in there. That's how it happened. Four reports explosions. And then, right. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people. I talked to Willie Rodriguez. I've talked to firemen. You know, I know my son, you know, the idea that fireball came down is the most idiotic thing there ever is, but that's what the 9-11 Commission talked about. You know, two lines saying, well, fireball came down, caused all this damage, caused damage at the past station, put, caused damage to refrigeration units downstairs in the sixth floor, fifth floor. This is impossible. Well, if it's impossible, then what's the story? And so, you know, it's just a matter of, you got to keep telling that story. But again, for people to do it, it's tough. But I have an advantage because people want to talk to me because I'm a non-evolution founding member. We thank you for, for your yeah. work and for hey, your time. Thank, thank you. you very much. I appreciate it.